we know the definition of the Laplace transform of a function f of d. Let us now compute these transform explicitly for a few important functions, polynomials and the sine and cosine. So let us start with the cosine and the sine over here. And we will use a trick and we will do both of them in one go. We use e to the power i a t equals cos a t plus i times sine a t. That will help us to compute both of them in one go and also simplify the integrals we have to compute. So what do we do? Well, the Laplace transform of e to the power i a t, we are going to compute that one because it's the Laplace transform then of cosine a t plus i times the Laplace transform of sine a t. So once we know this one, we can just take the real part, gives us the Laplace transform of the cosine, and we can take the imaginary part, and that will give us the Laplace transform of the sine. So there we go, the Laplace transform of e to the power i a t. So what did we need to do? Put the f of t here, multiply with e to the power minus st, integrate with respect to t from 0 to infinity. First we rewrite the exponent over there a bit to i a minus s, then we can find an antiderivative straight away over here. We plug in the uh, boundaries, so lower boundary gives us minus 1 over i a minus s or 1 over s minus a i a. And for the upper boundary we get 0 provided we pick s positive. So there we go. And then we want to take in the end through an imaginary part, so we multiply with s plus i a on top and below, then on top we are left with s plus i a, and below we get s squared minus i squared a squared, so s squared plus a squared. There we go. And then the Laplace transform of the cosine is the real part of this, so s times s squared over a squared, and the Laplace transform of the sine is the imaginary part, so a over s squared plus a squared. So that's this one. Now moving on to the polynomials. So first f of t equals t, then t squared, then we will recognize a pattern and we can do t to the power n for n positive. First t. Laplace transform of t. So we put the t here, multiply again with e to the power minus st, integrate over t from 0 to infinity. Here we have to use integration by parts, so integrate the exponential here, minus uh, 1 over s times e to the power minus st, and you leave the t between 0 and infinity, uh, minus the antiderivative, so e to the power minus st over s, uh, times dt. Now, what do we get? The first term uh, disappears, because in the lower boundary we have this 0, for t equals 0, we have a 0 over here, so vanishes, and if we pick s positive, then the upper boundary also vanishes. That means that we only have this term left, integrate again, gives us a minus 1 over s squared times e to the power minus st between 0 and infinity, and there we go, the upper boundary vanishes again, because s is positive, and on the lower boundary we get a minus 1 over s squared with the additional minus sign, because we are on the lower boundary, gives us a 1 over s squared. So the Laplace transform of f of t equals t equals 1 over s squared. Moving on to t squared, and after that we will recognize the pattern. So what do we see? Moving on to t squared. Here we have the t squared, put the t squared over here. Use again integration by parts. Uh, so and the derivative of e to the power minus st equals e to the power minus st times 1 over minus s. So there we go, times t squared. Between the boundaries vanishes if s is positive, so we are only left with this integral over here. And now we can take out the 2 over s, because that is a constant, uh, because we are integrating with respect to t, so we take it in front. And then we see that we have a 2 over s, times the Laplace transform of t. So the Laplace transform of t squared equals 2 over s times the Laplace transform of t. We already know what the Laplace transform of t is, 1 over s squared, so we are left with 2 over s cubed. And now we see the pattern. So 
For t cubed, after one integration by parts, we have some factor times the Laplace transform of t squared, which we already know. Now for t to the power 4, after one integration by parts, we are again at the Laplace transform of t cubed, which we already know. And that gives us the Laplace transform of t to the power n. It is uh, n factorial divided by s to the power n plus 1. So why is that? We can show it by induction. So for n equals 0, we have the Laplace transform of t to the power 0, which is 1, which is 1 over s, which we already computed. And then, well, we'll show this explicitly using induction. So we assume this is true up till small n equals capital N. So we assume this expression is true. And then we have to prove that this expression also holds for small n equals capital N plus 1. So that we have to prove this part. Now, how do we do that? Of course, by uh, one integration by parts, because if you do one integration by parts, we go back one step, which is exactly what we need. So if you compute a Laplace transform of t to the power n plus 1, put the f here, and you do one integration by parts, so integrate this term, over here it is, and leave the other one, again, between the boundaries 0, if s is positive, and you are left with this term over here. You can take out of the integral the n plus 1 and the s, so that's this part. And then the second integral is the Laplace transform of t to the power n, which is given by our induction assumption. So you are left with n plus 1 times n factorial and below by an s times s to the power n plus 1, which combines <coughs> to n plus 1 factorial divided by s to the power n plus 2, which is exactly what we needed to prove. So there we have the Laplace transform of any t to the power n 